I know why everything's different. We destroyed the entity, and by destroying it, it was as if it never existed. So everything it touched, all the evil, all of the curse, all of the losers in rubber masks and the dumb monster attractions, none of it ever happened. By destroying the evil entity, we created an entirely different timeline. Our neighbors, our families, they've never been negatively influenced by the evil entity. It's come undone. All of it. Our actions created a better world where we all have normal and productive lives. Lives that really aren't ours. Worse than that, gang, we've created a world without mysteries. What kind of a world doesn't have mysteries? A world where we don't belong. Hmm. What do we do now? Well, I just got this disc from Miskatonic University. Might as well see what it is. Harlan Ellison here. You can call me Mr. E. I know who you kids are, and I know that you've created an alternate timeline by destroying that evil entity. How do I know this? How, you ask in your purblind ignorance? It's obvious as antlers on a chihuahua. I'm a genius. All my years of writing speculative fiction has hypertuned my psychic mnemonic connection with alternate dimensions. That's why I'm able to remember every timeline ever created. And believe me, this has happened before. But you kids have slipped the time stream with me. Very rare. You're very strange. That's why I sent you this message. I've taken up residence as professor of subnuclear sciences at Miskatonic University. I want you in my class next semester. I've already got you all admitted. Even that weird dog. There's a lot of meddling to do, and a lot of mysteries out there that need solving. Don't miss it! Hold the phone! Jeepers! Jinkies! Zoinks! It's up to you, Thorn. <laughs> the book is useless to a mere mortal. <gasps> but not to awaken. Nay, I'll stop thee myself. Hurry, Thorn, read. Ancient evil get thee hence. Only good can recompense for the misdeeds that you've done, which return from whence you come. <laughs> One the world will never buy. Thank goodness. But like it would have been a hot bestseller. It was my life's dream made real. I have never wanted anything so much. I'm quite sure I never will again. I had to make it mine. And I would have gotten away with it too if it hadn't been for you meddling kids. Professor Svankmeyer. Don't you mean we would have gotten away with it? Windsor? No. Sorry, Velma. 
I put crime before science. Hmm. I know it was wrong. I'm almost glad you stopped us. How could you both be so selfish? A find like this belongs to the world. Yes, although technically it belongs to the town of La Serena, since this is under public land. My plan had been to scare people away for long enough to dig it out and transport it away from here. This thing is most likely the source of the Fantasaur legend. The Talki Palya probably found it centuries ago and told tales about it. So it seems strangely appropriate to use the Fantasaur myth to drive people off. Of course, I saw through the mining company's fake Fantasaur right away. And so did I. But I knew I could do something better. I'd seen Mr. Hubley's hologram projector, and I'd taken some computer animation classes. The raptor costumes were borrowed from the real live dinosaurs exhibit. And I got the paint strippers from a friend in construction. We planted them around town to create the Fantasaur's fire breath. Our plan was to use the Fantasaur to frighten the townspeople away. With the town empty, we could remove the Allosaur crystal unseen. The problem was that the crystal lay directly beneath the town. <laughs> Like, how'd you plan on getting this huge crystal above ground? Explosives. This cave system honeycombs underneath the whole town, so we set charges with fuses throughout. When the town was empty, we could blow the charges and remove the crystal at night. I can't believe I've turned into a common criminal. Me too. <laughs> common criminals? Like, no way, man. You guys are super villains. <laughs> Evil scientists with holograms and heat lamps. You think you got me all figured out, don't you, beautiful? Oh, I didn't say anything. I think he was talking to me. Oh, right. Looks like we foiled his plan. Like, not his plan, their plan. Don't get this storm off of me! I can't believe Deacon was really Babyface Beretti. After Babyface broke out of prison, he teamed up with Ranger Knutson to find LaRue's treasure. Knutson wore the Fishman costume as cover to search the lake for the lost town using the stolen sonar equipment. And he used the Woodsman costume to scare everyone away from Camp Little Moose. But with the Solstice approaching and us showing up, they had to step up their game. Exactly. Beretti posed as a camper named Deacon, acting as an inside man. That's why Deacon kept trying to get us to leave. He wasn't afraid of the woodsman. He needed us gone so they could blow the dam. But when we found that RV, they realized we were getting close. So Knutson brought the specter to life to try and scare us off for good. <laughs> I step on it! Like, I've got one question. How did Kadootson make the specter fly? Zipline. We would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for you meddling kids. As soon as we discovered the hidden chamber, Omar knew that treasure hunters would come from all over. I hope that if we could bring the curse to life, it would scare away the looters. So Velma became Cleopatra, while my workers and I became her army of the undead. Then, you used the quick-drying cement to make stone statues of yourselves. Convincing us all that the curse had really come true. I did add a few extra touches of my own, like the swarm of locusts. I learned to breed them last year in science class. Who knew it would come in so handy? You guys put on an awesome scare. Maybe we could do a project together. We already have, Rock. After you offered to play along, we took your video camera and cataloged most of the tomb. Thanks to you, that footage is going to be seen around the world. Yeah, baby! I'm going global! The only thing we didn't count on was your surprise visit to the worksite. But we could have helped you! Yeah! Why didn't you let us in on the secret? Like I said, I knew it would be dangerous, and I didn't want any of you to get hurt. 
I never imagined that you would lead an army of your own back to the tomb just to rescue me. Well, we have the citizens of the Lost City to thank for that. But it was really Shaggy and Scooby who were the bravest of all. They insisted on coming back for you, no matter what. Oh, you guys are the best friends ever. And now Cleopatra's final wish has been granted. The riches of Egypt have been returned to her people. No! I won't stand for this! No. Give me my crown! My crown! I want my crown. Well, that ought to hold it for another few thousand years. You should be proud, Velma. You helped restore one of the great monuments of the world. I just had a small part in the work. But you play a very large part in all of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby. Like, check it out, gang. A firework fit for the pharaohs. Are you sure that's a good idea, Shaggy? Sure. What could go wrong? <gasps> you know, I think it looks better that way. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby Dooby Doo! 